Hey, comic book community. It's Lombok's Love Affair here with some, well, okay news. Uh, the news is I found my grail. Um, one of my grails I've been looking for. <laughs> Uh, I couldn't keep a straight face for so long. Um, so I, let me show this book off. And it needs no introduction. And those of you that have watched my channel know exactly what I'm going to show right now. So if you know this, uh, just, just wait. This is amazing. Ready? Yes! This is what I've been looking for. And just kidding. Um, I thought I was so clever, right? Um, that is just a book, X Men Grand Design Number Two, uh, that has been on my read, each, read shelf for a while. Um, <clears throat> I need to get to reading that. So, okay, real story, down down to basics here. I, I ran home today because yesterday one of my uh, Grail goals came true. Hashtag twenty twenty goals, right, or something like that. So I, let me, I'll, I'll talk about it afterwards. I'll just, sh I'll just show this book because uh, it's effing amazing. Number one, Amazing Spider-Man book. A book that I never thought I would ever own, especially 30 years ago as a kid when I first started collecting Spider-Man around Amazing Spider-Man 361. So that's right, the first appearance of Carnage uh, was one of my first Spidey books. Actually, probably Amazing Span, uh, I'm sorry, regular Spider-Man, the McFarlane run of, of, of uh, Spider-Man number 13, 14, 15 were my first issues. Actually 12, the one with Wolverine on the cover. So. Uh, the Shadow of the Scots is getting on it, but um, what I'm going to do at the end of this video, I'm going to do a close-up and, and flip through the pages. This book is beautiful. I found a, a really, really great deal on this from a local dealer that goes to um, some cons that I check out every month or two. Um, and the story is this. Uh, if you remember... Uh, my last progress report on my Spidey run, I think it was issue number eight. It's the yellow cover. It might have been nine. Um, issue number nine, this, this dealer had on his wall. And he gave me a great price for it. Uh, he took off some money uh, from what it was asked for. And I told him, I was like, yeah, this is one of two issues I need to complete my run. Um, that's right, folks. This completes my Amazing Spider-Man run. Uh, issues one through 800. I don't have all the annuals and I don't have um, the uh, all the variants or the second prints. I have a bunch, but I, I, I don't have all of them. I was just trying to be a completionist for the main run. Um, so I told the guy this and he's like, it's like, yeah, I, you know, usually, you know, what I, he, he loves seeing people complete their sets with him. He has a lot of amazing issues uh, outside of Spider-Man. And um, so I bought the number eight or nine, whatever issue that was. Uh, Spidey, I think, is punching or someone's punching him. Uh, and he's like, I, I have it. I just bought a collection. A collection just came in, this guy told me. And this is um, November, late November before Thanksgiving. And, uh, you know, this collection came in and, and um, you know, he's consigning it, basically. He's selling it for the guy. And it's a childhood collection. And, and... Um, and let me know, uh, give me a couple weeks and message me. So I messaged him. We started a conversation. Uh, in December, he sent me pictures uh, when I was on work travel, first week in December. And so talking with him, he taught me the price, showed me the defects, showed me the, the issues with the book. Um, very trans transparent deal here. Uh, but then he dropped off the face of the earth. Uh, I didn't hear from him the last two weeks of, of December. I thought the deal fell flat. Uh, he just didn't respond to anything. And then I saw him at a con two weeks ago. And I was like, I was ready to like beef on him. I was like, hey, dude, what's going on? Uh, like, why are you ignoring me? And he's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. He's like, I am so behind on email. Uh, he's like, text is always be best, which I was just about to text him. But I knew I'd see him at this con. 
Uh, so uh, I te- he's like, just send me a text and we'll figure it out. And so he drove an hour to meet me uh, yesterday with the cargo in hand and uh, to pick up this amazing, amazing Spider-Man number one. Like I said, I never knew I'd, I'd, I'd own this book. Uh, the guy that's selling this, uh, so the dealer is the consigner, or the, the guy that's facilitating the deal, but the owner of this book uh, was selling a huge collection, including like Hulk 1s and, and other like keys that were pretty beat up. This one's really nice condition. It presents really well. Um, and ironically, like the guy wanted to give it, this was his boyhood, boyhood copy. He had been holding on to it. He read it when it came out. He bought it at the newsstand. And if you see up here, there's like a five cent. It's, it was 12 cents. But apparently this, this newsstand in Niagara, New York, uh, took all their books when they got them in and just stamped them five cents for some reason. Niagara, New York is about an hour and a half where I grew up. So it's kind of cool that this guy wanted it to go into someone's personal collection, that it's from near where I grew up. Uh, so it, it has really great um, sentimental value. Um, I'm a little numb, a little broke. Uh, I did get a good deal and I have sold a bunch of things over the past several months to, to stockpile some money to, to, to invest in this. Um, and you know, the next, the only other key Spider-Man issue I need right now is Amazing Fantasy 15. Um, I do want to replace my first appearance of Punisher, and that's because some idiot hole-punched it before they sold it, and uh, it was a gift. I, I didn't pick this book out um, years and years ago. So I, I do need to get a replacement. That's less on the priority for me right now. Um, Amazing Fantasy 15, I don't even know if that's on my priority list this year. This was go big or go home for me. This was the issue I wanted to um, really focus on. And I have to credit Brian from Take the Time Collectibles. Uh, he works at a shop down in Fort Lauderdale area, uh, Phil's, Phil's Comic Shop. And uh, I think I got that right, right? Uh, and he has a great shop. I've been into it a couple times when I've gone to visit. And he was telling me, he's like, you know, instead of the fantasy, why don't you go for the number one? Because that's going to be the one that is a little bit more attainable right now, but it's going to rise in value. And I totally believe that. Um, I'm going to get this cleaned and pressed. It does have a spine roll. Uh, it does have a tear in the back cover, which I'm not a fan of. But frankly, all I cared about was the front cover. I wanted it intact. Uh, I wanted it beautiful. And the colors are amazing on this. And I, I will... Like I said, do a close-up video flip through if you want to stick around for the video. Uh, so thanks to Brian at Take the Time Collectibles. Uh, also a huge thanks to Alex the Comic Hoarder. He's one that uh, has been on this journey with me, super psyched for, for me and, and, and uh, pumping me up uh, to, to uh, bite the bullet. Uh, when I was doubting myself, he, he gave me some reinforcement. So Alex, appreciate it. Um, appreciate all the help there. And uh, yeah. I mean, there's not much more I can say to this. This is uh, what I'm just super psyched to have in my collection now. So it just, it's, it's a little hard to believe uh, that this happened. So I couldn't be happier. I'm glad to share this journey uh, on YouTube. I, I couldn't wait to make this video for the house to be quiet, uh, for me to just set up uh, the camera, jostling, trying to figure out the best angle. But it looks like there's not much glare. Um, so, so yeah, there is Amazing Spidey number one from 1963. Um, and it just proves that if you're selling books and you want to hold on to, to the cash and not blow the cash on other comics, if you do show some, some restraint, it's a good way to try to invest in bigger books. That's what I'd love to do this year. So if I happen to find an Avengers 1, Avengers 4, um, and uh, Journey into Mystery 83, I think that's the first Thor. Um, would love to like just find those books. They're a little bit more affordable um, than some of the other monsters like Amazing Fantasy 15 or Fantastic Four number one, uh, but would really like to focus my collection on some of these older Silver Age gems, and uh, that's what I'm doing. So there you go. I'm going to flip over to do a walkthrough of this book, but uh, if I haven't said it already, 
Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for your support. Uh, this is not my last video. It sounds like a final video, but um, this has been an amazing run to complete and I can't wait to put it together. Someday, maybe I'll do a long video showing all 800 issues. Uh, that might be a snooze fest for some of you, but um, I need to get the collection in one place and, and I'm going to get this uh, graded first. So there's some time before that. Um, so thanks everyone. Appreciate all your support and here's a flip through. So as you can see, this book is excellent. It's got its staples intact. Uh, it does have some uh, of the creases in the spine, which this roll will come out. Uh, it does have some chipping, but I don't think it's terribly severe. Um, the only major defect in this book is on the back. Ouch. So that chunk is definitely going to mess with the grade. But, like I said, I don't care as long as the front is, is in place. So, just go slowly into this book. We got 1963 going on. It says 1962, actually, but then it's a 1963 issue. The first issue of Spider-Man. Got J. Jonah Jameson on here. I think this is the first appearance of the chameleon. We got good old Peter Parker. The pages are so white on this. You see that costume, the, the you know, second appearance of this costume, this character. I don't think the oh there, there's a page. I don't think I've actually ever read this book. I've had the Marvel Milestones. I think I have the um, True Believers editions. Um, but to actually um, you know, have it in my hands. I'm getting ready. Is this, uh, is this John Jameson, the pilot, I think? Like I said, I haven't read it. Spidey in space, basically. <laughs> There's some scandalous newspaper writing of Jonah Jameson. Wanted Spider-Man. There's the chameleon. The first appearance of the chameleon, and we got Fantastic Four, so crossover there. Uh, this might be the first crossover between Spidey and the Fantastic Four. I think that's correct, especially since it's his second appearance, so why not? Otherwise, there'd be an FF issue that people would want. The characters, not Kirby. Got some chameleon action going on. He's in the new issues. Got a little message from Spider-Man. Looks like he's trying to get you to do some letters from Stan Lee. The story continues. See, everything is so white. Not bad, a little tear there. And the end of the issue. A little staining just because the, the cover is gone. It is attached That's and it's, it's rolled. So this could be fixed. So there we go. The paper is super delicate. Thank God I have clean hands. So that's the issue of Spider-Man. If you've never seen it, number one, there you go. It's the first time I've flipped through it all myself, except for the first day when I just made sure that nothing was glaring. Um, again, thanks for watching. Appreciate all your support, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, thanks, everyone. Take care.